This is Dan, I'm a YouTuber from Poland who used to live in Taiwan for 9 years and now making videos on Asian politics. Recently, China has started talking about armed unification, which actually is a foreign invasion of Taiwan again. They even made a news piece with an officer, probably an actress, under name Wu Tong, which sounds similar to armed unification. And all kinds of hate propaganda against Taiwan and Taiwan's independence sprawled all around China. International military analysts have also been reminding Taiwanese that Taiwan Strait has now become a global military hotspot. Even though everyone is tired already of the CCP's giant infant regime, but no matter what, Taiwanese still have to prepare for a rainy day. Only by understanding and not underestimating the risk can you prevent some bad things from happening. It's a concept that probably everyone who ever learned risk management knows. It just so happened that a friend of mine in Taiwan recently asked me a very interesting question. Right now, we're all fighting to protect Taiwan, and cognitive warfare is one of the key battles Fields. Talking about Taiwan currently being a key target of Chinese hate propaganda, what can the Taiwanese people do to protect themselves? How to protect yourself and not provoke the giant infant? Advocate peace and not allow China to take advantage of you. This is the topic we're going to discuss today. 1.4 billion people behind the Great Firewall who have been brainwashed by the CCP for 70 years. Honestly, many people in Taiwan just want to ignore them and let them be. But unfortunately, once the people in Taiwan even start having those thoughts, the CCP would have even more opportunities to manipulate public opinion. Yes, it's exhausting, but the people in the free world have to take the lead here. Offense is the best defense here. So, how can Taiwan promote peace and democracy and avoid direct confrontation, and at the same time not fall as a target of the CCP propaganda? The strategy here should cover offense, defense, and still be flexible. So, let's talk about what kind of actions can be taken to protect Taiwan. Taiwan has not only powerful defense system, Taiwanese are very proud and have confidence in their military, but there also is a very powerful magic weapon. I think many of the pro Taiwan folks who are watching this video already know what I'm gonna talk about. Yes, it's the successful transitional justice policies. Taiwanese have survived a 30-year-long period of martial law and white terror and gained a unique experience in democratization of the country. So why not use the transitional justice experiences as a weapon in cognitive warfare? I've been talking about the importance of transitional justice in my previous videos. In Taiwan, there have been attempts by the Blue, the KMT party supporters, to defame transitional justice practices and to say the transitional justice is actually leading to social polarization. And actually some pro-Taiwan people, Taipei in Mandarin, people mostly opposing KMT, have been complaining to me, saying, well, Taiwan still has the CCP planted agents inside, and nothing has yet been done to them. The transitional justice policies towards the KMT atrocities of the past have not been implemented in full yet. And you say that this is a secret weapon? And don't forget that the Great Firewall is thick and high. How can you make the people in China listen? It's not possible, stop daydreaming. Okay, but you know that the CCP actually wants you to have such kind of thoughts. Be passive, evasive, surrender without fighting. So that they can continue to infiltrate Taiwan. So, to my Taiwanese friends, cheer up. There are some things that can be done simultaneously. Implementing the transitional justice policies in Taiwan and at the same time promoting it as a key weapon against totalitarian CCP. In reality, for the Chinese people, no matter how hard the CCP's brainwashing is, they are generally full of doubts in regards to the Communist Party. And once the party takes their belongings and start hurting their children, many of the Chinese people will stand up against it. We're all human beings, it's in our nature. Otherwise, there won't be so many people going to Beijing to file petitions. That's a system specific to China called Changfang. There won't be a need to have a special permit to enter Beijing, and no need for the policies to get rid of the so-called low-end population. This totalitarian regime won't have to do so many things to maintain stability. Being dissatisfied with authoritarianism is a normal human reaction. So the CCP is actually very scared that the concept of transitional justice will become popular in China. Just think about it, the Chinese people will realize that the party members who have been exploiting the people can be held accountable, that the wolf warriors can be tried in courts, and the compensations can be made to those who have suffered from this regime. Ban the party members from participating in politics and demand that the party property that has been acquired illegally can be given back to the people. You can actually condemn the authoritarian system and publicly scold the Communist Party. Wow! Then Mao Zedong status can also be taken down. No more mass murderers idols in Chinese towns. Finally, the CCP can be punished for its crimes. So, is the CCP scared of it? Of course they are. So, should Taiwan tell the Chinese people more about transitional justice? 
spread the information out. Of course it should. We all know the so-called Great Firewall of China. No matter how high it is, it won't stop the Chinese people from having a desire to live free. Even some Wu Maos like Zhang Guocheng couldn't keep it to themselves forever and publicly denounce CCP. Or even the CCP high-ranking officials like Wen Jiabao, whose article has been taken down by the CCP recently. They all don't really believe the malarkey the CCP is spreading around. Talking about cognitive warfare. It's not limited to spreading false information and misleading public opinion. What is our weapon here? Promote and spread the truth. And the CCP will have to increase their spending on maintaining the stability. Relatively speaking, they can also lower down their spendings on threatening Taiwan. I know some of the Taiwanese people can go as far as not having any contacts with the Chinese people due to the atrocities committed by the CCP. But we have to think about it. It's harder to resist 1.4 billion people than try to proceed 1.3 billion. That's the Chinese population minus party members. To demand that 90 million of the Communist Party members stop making China lose its face internationally. The CCP knows that the supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting. Well, Taiwan can also use this strategy. And by promoting such practices as transitional justice, the whole world will also notice Taiwan and how Taiwan is fighting China's aggression with promoting human rights and universal values. It's a good way to fight against hate propaganda coming out of China. It might also be a good idea to let the international media join. The whole world should let the Chinese people know the concept of transitional justice. At the same time, it also makes the whole world more aware of Taiwan's democracy. Let the international community once again understand how different Taiwan and the CCP-led China are. Well, the Chinese people will gradually realize that the CCP regime doesn't also make China lose face internationally, but is also a very vulgar and uncivilized regime which only destroys Chinese culture. It probably will also make them believe in democratization of China. The CCP has been brainwashing the Chinese people that if there was no communist regime, China would have become a war-torn state. So we have to tell them that the process of democratization can only make the lives of the Chinese people better and will lead to a better future for China. When the Soviet Union collapsed, there was no civil war. The current problems with the post-Soviet countries are also related to transitional justice practices not being implemented in full, leading to many of the former Soviet bloc countries falling into totalitarianism. Just compare it with the successes of Germany and their transitional justice policies. So I thought about some methods of promoting transitional justice. Next time when you see the CCP's internet army attacking Taiwan, what can the Taiwanese people say? How should the Taiwanese people answer? Come on, don't say anything about armed unification or invasion. Did you hear that there is such thing as transitional justice? If you implement those policies, the family members that have been abducted by the CCP might return. Will the invasion of Taiwan bring you any good? China can do better by implementing some transitional justice. Don't you want to see those wolf warriors and the CCP gang members being held accountable? And like that, we should promote transitional justice more to the Chinese people. Well, and what about Taiwan's campaigns towards the international community? How can the image of Taiwan become even more positive. I think it's crucial to strengthen the promotion of the Taiwanese history internationally. As China currently is trying to change the international discourse towards Taiwan, they've been using the cognitive warfare methods for ages. And the international community has been listening to those lies by China that Taiwan has been a part of China since ancient times. But there is no historical framework for such a discourse. And it could lead to a very dangerous misunderstanding if the world starts believing in China's lies. It has been hard to promote Taiwan in the previous appeasement period, when everyone was afraid of saying anything against China. But I think now it's the right time. Taiwanese can become more proactive promote Taiwanese history internationally and the processes of democratization that happened in Taiwan. Invite more international professionals and media. Friends of Taiwan, look for international celebrities to support this beautiful country and promote the true information on Taiwan. Of course, at the same time, Taiwan should also continue its fight against the domestic infiltration. Cognitive warfare is really not just defense. Countering every move is not enough. We have to be more proactive. So what are the other methods of brainwashing that we haven't discussed yet? There is one thing I realize is not being currently widely discussed. But the dictatorships are using those methods frequently. It's brainwashing of the children. Right now, in countries like China and Russia, children under the age of 15 are being a target of government-mandated ideological and military propaganda. And it's very different from the educational practices in democracies. Generally speaking, if a country wants to recruit young people for the army in the future, some military experience, summer camp, or museum visits are arranged to make the kids interested. But usually these are not mandatory. If the parents want their kids to learn more about the army, about the military, they can send them to such camps. 
But in China, you probably have seen some videos when, in some kindergartens, children are forced to wear military uniforms, hold toy weapons and pretend that they're killing the Japanese, not to mention mandatory or semi-mandatory joining the young pioneers. If you don't perform well in this organization, it will also affect your advancement to higher educational facilities. They are cultivating the future soldiers and regime defenders. Like in Hong Kong, the primary school students are being taught how to suppress the protesters in the metro. This matter has not even been taken seriously internationally. Just think of it. Making children wear Nazi uniforms. Such behavior would be condemned. But no one cares about children wearing communist military uniform and shouting that they are going to fight and kill. Look at the Convention of the Right of the Child and how many positions did the CCP violate. For example, Article 13. The child shall have the right to freedom of expression. The right shall include the freedom to seek, receive and impart information and ideas of all kinds, regardless of frontiers, either orally, in writing, or in print, in the form of art, or through any other media of child choice. Then, Article 14. State parties shall respect the right of the child to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion. China is not respecting any of those provisions. And the Convention on the Rights of the Child unfortunately doesn't have any provisions restricting the ideological military propaganda the children are being exposed to. I think the international community is too negligent to the importance of this matter now. But in fact, such behavior of the totalitarian states should be condemned. If you take a closer look at the totalitarian states before and during the Second World War, Nazi Germany, Italy, Japan, Soviet Union, all these countries have been brainwashing their children, making them wear military uniforms, hold toy weapons, pretend to kill people, show obedience to their leader. After the Second World War, Japan, Italy and Germany carried out educational reforms. Right now you can all see, after removing the element of militarization from children's education, the whole society can change drastically. Especially if you look at Japan and Germany. In comparison, Russia and some countries of the former Soviet Union that haven't done a good job in transitional justice, as well as CCP and North Korea continue brainwashing their children, telling their kids to be ready for war at any time, creating an atmosphere of hate at schools. So how do you think, what can Taiwan do to counter the cognitive warfare attacks from China? You can leave a comment in the section below. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please press like, subscribe and share. This is Ten, and I see you in the next one.